Hi, I'm Roseanne Ullman. In 2023, Salon Today asked me to research and write an article exploring the texture service category in the salon industry. This is that article. The power of texture. If your salon doesn't have a multicultural strategy, it doesn't have a growth strategy. A thought-provoking panel at Data-Driven Salon Summit encourages owners to embrace texture services and broaden their client demographic. A question has popped up as owners and stylists notice that they're missing out on lucrative texture revenue. At first, the question doesn't seem to be tough. Why doesn't every stylist know how to do every type of hair? But this quickly becomes a circular conversation. Services for highly textured hair are not generally taught in cosmetology school because most state boards do not include texture skills on the exam required for licensure. Many salons don't take it upon themselves to train stylists in texture because the salon educators have not been trained in the services, plus many salon owners believe they don't have textured hair clients, so why train for texture? But if textured hair clients are not going to those owners' salons, it's because their stylists cannot do textured hair. Why is that? And we're back where we started. The industry faces and embraces the issue. Of course, some stylists do know how to do textured hair. They know how to cut it, color it, and style it in all looks, trendy, retro, or traditional, down, up, or in between. These stylists tend to have primarily textured hair clients. With the salon community split into stylists who do texture expertly and those who don't do it at all, the 2023 Data-Driven Summit offered a Power of Texture panel to explore ways to bridge that divide. Moderated by Professional Beauty Association, PBA, Director of Membership Leslie Perry, the panel included members of PBA's Texture Education Collective, which calculates that 65% of the world's population has textured hair ranging from wavy to curly to coily. The collective has emerged as the first step in bringing together industry leaders working to turn that circular conversation into a linear one, with a beginning at licensing requirements and an end goal of developing texture skills in all stylists. On the PBA website, the collective's homepage invites anyone wanting to lend their voice to the effort to sign a petition urging state cosmetology boards to include textured hair in test standards. Edwin Neal, both a member of the collective and a participant on the data-driven panel, is president and CEO of Neal Corporation, as well as owner of multiple Aveda Arts and Sciences Institutes. Conveniently, Neal also is chairman of the Louisiana Cosmetology Board, Aware that he's the right person in the right place at the right time, Neil set the example by updating his home state's cosmetology exam. In my position as the head of the state boards of cosmetology in Louisiana, I started to think we should make textured hair a requirement that we tested on, Neil explains. A bunch of major brands in the industry are working state by state, trying to get a mandate that texture education be taught and tested for all graduates and licensed cosmetologists. 10 states have either introduced bills or are considering legislation similar to Louisiana's, according to PBA. The brands Neil refers to make up the growing group of supporting partners joining the Texture Education Collective's four founding partners, Neil Corporation, along with Aveda, Diva Curl, and L'Oreal USA, which all had representatives on the power of Texture Panel. In addition to co-founding the collective, each of these brands directs its own in-house initiatives aimed toward broadening texture reach. Our Texture Mastery Program provides free texture education to cosmetology schools throughout the country, says Erica Rogerson, VP, DE&I, Business Development, Professional Products Division, L'Oreal USA, adding that 125 schools also are now participating in the Texture Mastery Program. And we have the texture of change, which is our commitment to provide accessible and equitable textured hair education and business development resources throughout the industry. We implement texture hair techniques across cutting, coloring, and finishing services. Roberson says owners ask L'Oreal how to build texture into their curriculum when they're already short on hours. Roberson tells them that teaching texture does not have to add time. Texture should not be a separate discipline, she explains. It should be included in what's already taught. 
when you're teaching cutting, coloring, and finishing, those services should be performed and taught on all hair types. Hair color services like lightening require different time management and processing techniques depending on the structure or pattern of the hair. That's what we bring when upskilling in the industry. Adds Perry, sometimes it's as simple as having a mannequin with quadrant hair or using two mannequins with different texture types. You just shouldn't have only straight hair mannequins. To help schools with the process, L'Oreal has developed a texture implementation roadmap which it recently introduced into its Texture Mastery program. The company has similarly assisted state board leaders in including texture on practical and written cosmetology exams. Roberson reports that these efforts have been well received. The state boards see that it's not about adding anything, she emphasizes. It's adapting what we're already testing and making sure it's more inclusive. In Louisiana, Neil says there has been no opposition from schools after the board wove texture into testing. Many schools were already implementing more texture education, Neil reports. We've had no pushback from salons either. The general reaction is that this should have happened a long time ago. After all, the opposite problem doesn't occur. Everyone learns straight hair, and some boards even test on straightening. So there's a lot of education around straight hair. Renee Goddard, Aveda's Global Artistic Director Texture, says texture awareness should be built into every corner of the industry. Every school should be teaching it. Students should have kits with texture mannequins. Every state should have texture included on the exam, and no salon should have employees who can do everything except texture, Gather says. Neil points to an ancillary movement, the Crown Act, that was created before the pandemic and has been gaining momentum concurrently with the awakening to texture education. Now law in about 20 states. The Crown Act protects people against discrimination based on hairstyles such as braids, locks, twists, and knots when worn in the workplace or in public schools. Younger generations drive change. As often happens with a new idea, it's been younger people, both clients and stylists, who have been quick to accept and drive an expansion of texture education. Millennials and Gen Z are demanding new things, says Alicia Williams senior director of anti-racism and racial equity at Diva Curl and a member of the data-driven panel. They're frustrated. Salons may have to acknowledge these new demands or they'll be missing dollars. There's been an evolution of what consumers are demanding. That evolution has been gathering strength for some time, but the pace may have quickened with the Black Lives Matter movement. Some of the panelists say that's when the conversation became more honest. During the pandemic and with the Black Lives Matter movement, there was much more emphasis within the professional beauty community on not only texture, but race, Perry says. There's been more focus on what is taught in a predominantly black beauty school versus a white beauty school. Roberson senses that today's students do not want to have to choose between school cultures. At Premier Orlando this year, I interacted with many students at our booth, she recalls. They were black, Latino, white, no matter the race, they were 100% behind this. Some white students said they saw that they were not learning how to do textured hair and they wish they could bring it back to their school. Especially with Gen Z, there is a desire to learn this. Where we're also seeing a gap is that instructors aren't confident. So we're upskilling instructors to be skilled in teaching on all hair types as well. Texture versus race. One prominent voice is texture educator Kia Neal, founder of Color Culture and framer of a texture versus race conversation. The struggle has always been there, Neal notes. Those cries were heard. But when people were on pause during the pandemic, they had no choice but to see it, feel it, and be in it. With the conversation actively happening, we wanted to build community around what would come next, how to heal the industry. We didn't soften it. We did it through truth. Neal had been pursuing that truth since 2018, when she began teaching texture methods. Her course, Texture Versus Race, developed into a summit of the same name. I'd worked hard not to sit in that proverbial box of being a black stylist, says Neil, who describes herself as an industry disruptor, advocate, and activist. In planning the first summit, I went back and forth about what to present. Input from social media helped her curate ideas. Neil reports that a Facebook group of 2,500 members mushroomed practically overnight. People wanted to be in a space without judgment, but with answers, she recalls. We talked about all of it. We were cracking the code, slicing through the discomfort. 
That ignited everybody's thought process and self-examination. Why are the salon and church the last remaining institutions to be overtly segregated? Why don't white stylists go to education with black stylists, work along black stylists, and have black clients? Ultimately, the resulting first summit sought to turn the narrative toward texture. If white people said, I've never done curls, we did curls, Neil says. If black people said, I don't know how to do straight hair, we did straight hair. The fifth Texture versus Race Summit is set for December 10th through 12th, 2023 in Baltimore, Maryland as a full three-day show experience. Fear of Other. Roberson too says the discussion should focus on texture. When I speak to textured hair types, wavy, curly, coily, I don't base that in race, she says. We have a rise in biracial and multiracial people across the country. Plus, there are different texture types within each race. Anyone can walk into the salon with a texture hair pattern. Williams says that Diva Curl promotes curl flexibility, which means that the stylist and the client decide from all available style options. People with curl can straighten if they want, she says but the push to embrace curly hair has come about because relaxers haven't been good for hair. Our product lines focus on understanding that there are different textures even within textured hair, and we offer products for all of them. Curly hair can be fine or coarse, for example. It's not automatically coarse. Even when brands develop product lines addressing textured hair, they don't always clarify that for consumers, Gallar notes. Salons, too, must make it clear when they have texture services available. Speak to the consumer in a way that will get black people to come in, Gother suggests. Inevitably, someone with texture will walk through your door. Make sure your salon space looks like all people belong there. If your stylist can do textured hair, those consumers will come to you. Making this shift starts with awareness. Black people are not a monolith, Gather emphasizes. They don't all feel the same. But while texture doesn't belong to a race, one race always has texture. I think you can't rectify this unless you acknowledge the hair that you fear the most. You fear it because it belongs on someone who is other from you. Because texture education was separated, black people built a culture around this omission. Now there has to be careful work in inviting people into a space that they were omitted from. Learning about the culture and inviting people in elevates that thing that has been omitted and elevates the whole industry. And as far as I'm concerned, if you prioritize and elevate black women, everyone wins. For Roberson, it comes down to helping stylists develop confidence to do all types of hair. If my hair is straight and I've learned how to do hair on straight hair patterns, that's my level of comfort, she explains. I found that many stylists fear stepping out of the services they've become expert in. Our effort is trying to build the confidence level while professionals are still in school, when they're open to learning. In Salon Texture Ed Culture. What would a salon culture inclusive of texture and texture education look like? One team planning to attend the 2023 Texture versus Race Summit will be coming from Interlock Salon and Spa in the historic seaside city of Newburyport, Massachusetts, which attracts visitors as well as year-round residents to its charming shops and restaurants. In 2020, Interlock's owner Ginny Aramo and her daughter Jordan Becker who is the salon's CEO, while Aramo is more involved in running the med spa side of the business, saw a void in their salon menu and decided to make sure the salon could serve all potential clients. Everyone loves the day trip here, says Aramo, who was asked to join the data-driven panel to contribute her experience. Our clients come from a very large region. Having a business mindset, I saw texture as a huge opportunity. There are plenty of people who drive distances to get what they want. I'm trying to make it an option for people with all types of hair to come to interlocks. At what she calls a big risk of losing staff, Iramo has implemented a policy of compulsory texture education. The salon was already funding 100% of education and the accompanying travel, including hands-on sessions and even shows in Europe. Iramo told her team that they would continue to have access to that benefit, only if they also took the texture classes she arranged. Most of her team welcomed the opportunity to learn. The younger stylists in particular were eager to expand their skill set, but some resistance came from the master stylists who already had full books and enjoyed being successful at what they were doing, which did not include texture services. Iramo refused to make an exception for them. We fundamentally need to right this ship, Iramo says. We don't want someone to walk in the door and have to tell that person we don't do that hair. 
Aramo dismisses any suggestion of hiring one person to cover texture needs. I want everyone to know how, she says. The more we do textured hair, the more comfortable stylists will get with it. Aramo has given her team lots of time to absorb the change, and going slowly has paid off. So far, Interlox hasn't lost any team members. We used the pandemic to shift our mindset, but we didn't build our skill set much until 2022, she reports. This fall marks the debut of the salon's natural hair menu with terms like curly, coily, and zigzag so that clients can identify with the type of hair they have and stylists won't think in preconceived notions of race. When I first launched hands-on education, I deliberately brought in white models to show that textured hair is not just about race, Aramo notes. We have an Irish client with fine hair that's zigzag, tight, and textured. We know that we have to style her hair in a very different way. With textured hair, you also learn about different products. To add texture education to any salon's calendar, Irama reminds owners to look into state's workplace grants. She has been approved to use a Massachusetts Workforce Development Express grant toward having her staff attend the Texture versus Race workshop. Stepping Stones. The texture conversation is opening up further industry discussion. Perry says the PBA may next tackle aesthetics licensing. I'm a licensed esthetician and I did wedding makeup for years, Perry says. Brides would frequently bring in their bridesmaids with darker complexions who would ask whether they should plan on doing their own makeup or at least bringing in their makeup products. Apparently in the past they'd been told that and it broke my heart. That is unacceptable. Professionals should be able to work on all skin and know how to do something like a chemical peel on any skin without causing damage. Roberson is optimistic that these issues will be resolved. This is one of the most diverse industries in terms of how beauty pros identify, with all representation of LGBTQ plus truly welcome in this industry, she explains. I see opportunity for more cross-intersectionality of that diversity. It's beautiful to see that this industry is a place where many feel they can make a career no matter what background they're from. I'm excited about how much this is happening. In a way that legislation has been known to drive social change, Neil believes that the upskilling achieved in school because of the revised testing content will hasten the amount of diversity we see in salons. Williams adds that clients will be the beneficiaries when all salons can do everyone. It's a beautiful experience when someone knows how to do your hair, when you feel seen and included, Williams says. It's community, being seen, embracing yourself, feeling beautiful. The same way that someone with straight hair can walk into any salon in any city, that's what we should be providing to all clients.